What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and this is a review of the Zinc by 118 Design. This blaster is a brand new 3D printed pistol to the Nerf community, and I cannot wait to share my thoughts and feelings on this thing with you guys. I did build this one myself, so have quite the full experience of what it took to get this thing functioning, and uh, definitely willing to share a few uh, pointers with you guys, so definitely stay tuned. All right, you guys, so this blaster is pretty darn awesome. I mean, look how small it is. It is basically the same form factor as the DZP Mark II, but this one is a fully 3D printed blaster and designed by a nerfer in the community, which makes it pretty darn awesome. I really enjoy building these new designs by the community. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and this one has a pretty spectacular hardware kit that uh, allows it to get the performance it does. So uh, pretty cool. Um, but before we talk about it too, too much, I want to take you outside. And because I know you guys want to see this thing fire, uh, we do have a K25 spring in here. And there's still a little bit of tweaking probably to be done on this blaster to get it to top, top performance. Uh, still a little inconsistent, but I do want to share the numbers with you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and see what it's got. All right, so before we get the chronograph out and put some shots over it, I just wanted to give you guys a really nice up close look of the blaster. Pretty darn cool thing. I mean, he did a nice job designing this. Uh, we do have some grip tape on the back here. You can kind of, uh, he does give you a template for the sides, but you can kind of do what you want on the back and front. I, that's what I went with. Um, gives you something, you know, a little more grip on the blaster and it covers up that line if you do go with the two-part design there. Uh, so that's nice. Um, the weight of this blaster is just honestly my favorite thing. It's really cool to spin. It's just, it feels really good in the hand. Um, very comfortable blaster. Uh, so yeah, you know, we'll talk about it more inside after we do the firing demo, but let's go ahead and put some shots over the chronograph. All right, you guys, let's see what this baby's got. We're gonna put some shots over the chronograph. We've got some bamboos in here, and then we'll try some Adventure Force Pro darts, and then even some Worker Gen 3s. One forty-three. It's kind of low. One forty-four. Huh. One forty. 141, 144, 141, and I think that's all I had loaded. Those were much lower numbers than I got with the Adventure Force Pro darts, so we'll see how those do here. One thirty-nine, huh? It's getting much higher numbers inside. This is kind of strange. One fifty-seven, one seventy-six. That's more like it. One sixty-eight, one eighty-one. That's about the highest I've been getting. One seventy-eight. 183. Oh, I guess we uh, fired them all. Hopefully that didn't hurt anything. Sometimes it's supposed to stop and not load in darts, but I have issues with my follower getting twisted sometimes. It seems to load all the darts in, but it doesn't, the follower has to be all the way up for it to actually stop the pusher so you don't dry fire like that. So, um, it seems to get stuck sometimes on the magazine release, but uh, still got to tweak out some things. That's one of the problems with 3D printed magazines, unfortunately. We'll give it another go with some Adventure Force Pros. 162, really nice ranges, getting solid 80 feet, maybe more. 167. 
157, 164, 161, 184. Wish we could get that a little more consistent. Got one left. 156. So, I don't know, very inconsistent. I've had some issues with that. I'm not sure if my seal is perfect yet. Um, definitely maybe some things to tweak. I feel like, if anything, um, I have some resistance from the slide rod uh, that makes it a little inconsistent. There's an O-ring in between the catch piece and the plunger uh, that I feel like um, rubs against the rod and uh, that actually slows it down but also helps with the seal. So I'm not real sure exactly if there's some things I could do to tweak this to make it a little more consistent. Obviously there's a longer barrel um, with the K25 spring. The longer barrel will probably give me a little more consistent numbers uh, but it just kind of destroys the look of the blaster. I really like this profile a lot more so I don't really see myself going with the longer barrel but we'll go ahead and try some Gen 3s. As you can see, it has a really nice drop of the magazine. I have sanded that really well. That is super important. Sanding, a lot of sanding to do with this blaster. Here we go. 173. 184. 171. 175. 171, one more I think, 169. So obviously this blaster can hit some pretty nice numbers for the size it is. I mean, it is the same size as the Dart Zone Pro Mark II, so pretty impressive uh, that it can hit, you know, upwards of 180 FPS. I did seem to like the Dart Zone Pro darts and the Worker Gen 3s a little bit better than the Bamboos. Uh, definitely got much better ranges with those also. Uh, most of those actually were going into the pond or right close to it. So, you know, between 80 and 100 feet, which is pretty nice uh, for ranges from a pistol, to be honest. I was actually pretty surprised by that. So uh, that's very impressive. A little inconsistent, which is unfortunate. But I do think if we use the longer barrel, we'd get a little bit better numbers and more consistent numbers, I think. Uh, my seal may not be 100%. Every time I plug it, it doesn't really seem to stop at all, but I'm not sure if that's just because of the design of the blaster or what's going on there. But overall, this thing has a really cool design. I really like it. I really enjoyed building it. Um, it is a challenging build. It does have a hardware kit that will run you $75 plus shipping, which is, or maybe it's plus tax, which is about, a, about an $80 kit. Uh, but a lot of these parts are custom CNC parts, really, really nice hardware kit. So I can see why the cost is so expensive. Um, it's not your normal like Caliburn style hardware. This is like custom stuff. So pretty darn sweet. All in all though, the way this thing was put together is just really slick and I cannot wait to see what improvements are made to this thing. Uh, but overall, I really like the blaster a lot. I may even build another one in the future. I like it so much. One of the major things that I was worried about when I saw this design was how hard it would be to prime. And it's not terrible to prime, it's not as hard as I thought, but it isn't the most comfortable prime. Uh, obviously you're gripping the plunger tube. Um, there's a lot of sharp edges. I actually cut myself pretty good slipping and uh, cutting myself on the, on the uh, iron sight here on the back. Uh, took a big uh, chunk out of my little finger. Um, so things like that, I would like to see, you know, improve, maybe just smooth some of these edges up a little bit. Um, this edge right here really uh, does a number on my palm when I grip, grip it because I like to prime this way. Um, so that kind of does a number. Um, I know some people put grip tape on there. That may help a little bit, but that's just going to add more black to this blaster that already has quite a bit of black to it. So um, go ahead and shut this thing and I'll show you the seal. It's easier to seal though without the front piece on. If I can get that off, I don't know if I can because it's a little tight. So we'll see if it has any sort of seal and I'm not sure if there's something going on here because it doesn't really seem like it has a great seal. Yeah, it doesn't really have a seal at all. 
Uh, so I don't know if that's just the design of the blaster or what, but when I had the uh, 788 spring in it, it seemed to have a much better seal, but it actually didn't seem to be getting very good performance. I was, I've done some tweaking since then, so maybe I've made some changes that have improved it, but I was only getting like 115 FPS with the 788. Uh, this seems to be getting more consistent what I think people are getting with the K25, so maybe some of the tweaks I made or maybe the power of the stream is just overcoming the resistance of the, the um, I think it's that O-ring that's going across this um, rod here. So there's definitely a lot of tweaking to be done with this blaster. Uh, so if you enjoy doing stuff like that to tweak, then this may be a build that you may enjoy a lot. Uh, but it's not something you can just like throw together and it's going to work perfectly. You know, the Lynx was really good about that. That's one of the things that really impressed me. It was just so easy to build and you just threw it together and it just worked really well. Uh, this one's not so much that way. There's a lot of sanding you have to do. I did have to sand the trigger a lot. I really recommend doing that inside and outside so you can get a very smooth trigger pull. Uh, that helps out a lot. The Magwell, obviously that's going to be something you're going to want to sand. Uh, the magazines have to be sanded quite a bit. Uh, but you got 3D print stuff running on, you know, rubbing on 3D printed parts and you just, it's going to cause friction and you just have to sand things like that. Some of the holes tolerance wise were a little tight, but I don't think it was like really excessive tight. Like it wasn't like I had to like take a drill bit and drill out a ton of things, except for the things that you're supposed to do that with. Pretty much all the things were just something I just had to take a file and file up just to get it smoother. Some of the smaller holes were a little tight, but like the main running rods here uh, weren't too bad. I filed them up just to make it smoother. Um, recommend really doing that anyways. You're going to want a file set uh, to, uh, to tackle this one because that comes in handy quite a bit um, because you just need to smooth out the 3D printed lines, you know, so those rods run smoothly as possible. And then obviously lubricant helps a lot. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty cool blaster. I'm really looking forward to seeing what improvements are made to it. You know, I think some people may not like the fact that it only uses these proprietary magazines. Uh, so you can actually build one that's a short one like this. This will hold seven darts. And then there's also a longer version. I haven't had very good luck printing this. Uh, my printer seems to like to warp off the bed even with a brim. And then it gives me a like a smush line there. And that kind of ruins the look of it and function of a magazine. It's kind of important to print these. Uh, well, but uh, the, the shorter ones I actually prefer because of the, the just the overall look. So that's probably what I'll go with anyways. But you do have those two options, but you cannot use like your Talon angled mags. I'm not sure if that was even a thing when he started designing this, but honestly, I like the fact that he designed his own magazines because that gives you a magazine release that I really like here in front. That's really easy to access. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then it just gives you a really comfortable grip. If you had the Talon angled mags, you're going to have a much thicker grip, not nearly as comfortable and ergonomic. And this grip is super comfortable. I really like the grip a lot. Uh, so this grip is great. The gripping in terms of the priming, not so great. And I kind of figured that when I purchased this thing, obviously it's a plunger tube that's your slide, you know, you're gripping a plunger tube. So it is what it is. But it is primable. It isn't something that's not doable, especially once you get things moving smoothly. Probably the hardest part of building this thing was actually the super gluing parts on and not getting them in the wrong spots. Uh, you most likely, and you sh unless you print the unibody um, version of this, you're going to have to glue the grip together, together. And that is a little tricky. I used a magazine to line it up. Uh, so I would recommend that. Uh, but be careful not to glue the magazine into it. And I used a super glue with an activator, which I think helped uh, with runniness of the glue and whatnot. I prefer that. But that thing had a immediate bond. So that prevented that presented a bit of a challenge. And I actually the first version I did uh, where. <laughs> so, yeah, I printed this whole thing out and realized that evidently that the files that were originally sent out, the version one were wrong and it did not have the hole for where this pin goes. So I had to reprint this whole thing, but uh, 118 design was great. And he actually sent me a lot of replacement parts along with a few extras. So that was really nice of him. So went ahead and reprinted the whole thing. 
And uh, now we have the version 1.1, which I think is a better version anyways, uh, more refined and has all those tolerances options for you to choose from. That's awesome. So we got that ironed up. He was great. He also helps you with any sort of uh, issues you had. I had a little trouble uh, figuring out how to get the spring in and find the hole for the magazine release. Some of the directions also could use a little work, um, a little more detail in terms of uh, what should be sanded, where it should be sanded, uh, just for smooth function. I think he gave me better uh, directions in his email with the magazine mag magazine release. Uh, so uh, maybe if he, he'll probably update those, but he's updating the files, updating uh, the directions, I'm sure, too, in the future um, to give you the best product he can. So I applaud him on that. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what else comes with this thing. But I am definitely rambling a lot. I just really want to share, share my thoughts. I've spent quite a few weeks getting this thing to where it is today. Uh, so pretty proud of it. And he does recommend this whole blaster be printed in PETG. This is actually Prusament Galaxy Black. And this green, which is an Alien Ooze Pet G from Alien 3D. Uh, pretty nice color combination. I do like it. A little dark. Probably won't be using this one outside in my park. Uh, but, you know, taking it to an indoor arena that I play in sometimes, that should be no problem. But yeah, this is a, a blaster that definitely has a real steel look to it. So definitely think about that when you're taking it out. Uh, make sure if you're playing in a game... Uh, somewhere they they approve this blaster and they're okay with it um, I think it's okay it has a big clear plunger tube and as long as it has mostly bright colors I think it's going to be all right but uh, really just depends on your area and everything so uh, definitely check with your admins on that one but um, definitely really like the profile of the blaster um, definitely something that can be holsterable easily and I'm just really happy that we're building more blasters that that are pistols. I really am glad that we got some pistol designs in the Gecko. I really hope to build one of those too. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, definitely smash that like button and subscribe because I will be building one of those at some point uh, because that's just a really cool new blaster. And then obviously we have the Dart Zone Pro Mark II and that blaster, I would, if you're wanting a comparison, which one to purchase, if you're somebody that just wants to buy something that works really well, uh, I would recommend obviously the Dart Zone Pro Mark II because that is just right out, right out of the box perfect really I mean it's used like about 150 right out of the box you know well not quite maybe 150 I don't know whatever it shoots out of the box it's pretty darn good obviously 130 to 150 and with some mods you can get it up to even over that so uh, yeah pretty impressive blaster right out of the box this one definitely is a little more expensive I mean the hardware kit alone obviously is one is like the same price as the Mark II so it's not really something that I want to compare too much uh, because it's just two different things. I enjoy building blasters, so that's why I bought this. And, uh, you know, this was a lot of fun. It's a very comfortable blaster. I actually think the grip is more comfortable. The prime is not as easy to prime, uh, a little more difficult there, but definitely a cool thing. And I'm rambling a lot, but I hope you guys enjoy my thoughts on the thing because it is just sweet. So definitely let me know what you think of it. If you've built one, let me know what what you had issues with, uh, what you like, what you don't like in the comment section. I'm open to hearing what you guys think of it. Um, if you plan on building one, let me know. Uh, if you don't, let me know why. Probably not, definitely not a blaster that's for everyone. And I don't blame you if you pass on this one because it is a very difficult build. If you haven't built things before, I wouldn't recommend starting with this. The hardware kit is obviously expensive, so that's a deal breaker for some people. But overall, really cool design and I cannot wait to see what else is done to this thing to improve on it because uh, I think it could be pretty darn sweet down the road. So thank you guys so much for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed. Ring the bell for notifications and as always, peace out.